Hello everyone. Today's lesson will be on practice pads. Several of you have asked me to do a video about this. I'm glad to do it. Um, if you've seen most of my videos on um, rudimental drumming, you see probably half of them are done on a pad. That's for uh, a few important reasons. First of all, uh, a regular drum, if you practice as much as I do, which is several hour, hours a day, uh, and play professionally, obviously, um, it's hard on your ears. And I don't like to use earplugs all the time. So a pad is one thing I can do where I don't have to use earplugs. Uh, it also makes it easier to talk um, without earplugs in, so I'm not hearing, you know, the head voice with the, with the earplugs in. Also, uh, I can use a click without using headphones if I use a pad. And lastly, when you use a practice pad, things are extremely clear. It's like putting your drumming under a microscope, especially if it's a, a really good pad. So you hear every note. Uh, and you can really um, examine your playing if you record yourself, which you should and make sure everything's clean, okay? So that's why I use a practice pad a lot. Now, obviously I practice a lot on drums and, and a regular snare drum because you're not gonna go on a gig and play on a practice pad, I hope. So I recommend doing both, but I always normally warm up on the pad and I'll play, you know, if I'm learning a new piece, I'll learn it on the pad and then move it to the snare drum. Now it's important not to play too loud on a practice pad, you can play what I call pad volume. And then when you put it on a snare, it'll be unbelievably deafening. So you always have to be aware of the fact that you can be overplaying if you practice all the time on a pad. That's why I always tell my students to play their material on a snare drum as much as possible after they learn it, okay? So let's talk about different kinds of pads. My favorite kind is a pad with a real drum head, like that. So before we get into my favorite type of pad, though, let's talk about some alternative pads that you can use that are even quieter. And those would be rubber pads. Now, I don't like rubber pads that are all rubber, like, in other words, just gum rubber. Um, so my favorite type of uh, rubber pad is this right here. This is a vacuum pad. I believe Billy Gladstone, the great snare drummer, great drummer, invented this and had a patent on it. Um, several companies make it now though. This one is a Ludwig vacuum pad. It's very old. I've had this, I don't know, since I was 12 years old or so. And uh, this pad's great uh, for traveling. Uh, just be careful because it's got metal in it. So if you go through the airport, they're going to try to figure out what the heck this thing is. It also has a suction uh, effect on your drum so it won't fall off. It might move around a little, but it's on there, it's like a suction cup, okay? Which is nice. On certain drums, probably not this one because it's a classical snare drum, but on certain drums, you can actually turn the snares on and get a snare response from it too, which is neat. And that uh, was part of the allure of it when Billy Gladstone invented it. But I normally use it, again, if I'm in a hotel or something like that, where I, I don't want to disturb people. And a pad with a regular head would be a nuisance, would disturb people, I'm sure. So this pad sounds like this. Okay, very metallic, not pleasing, doesn't feel great, but it gets the job done if you want to do some warming up and, and again, not disturb people. Now, uh, by the way, the sticks I'm going to be using today are these, um, these are sticks that I make. I know a lot of you have asked about these. I do have a lathe and I do make sticks and I do sell them. Right now, um, I'm out, I'm sold out, but I'll, I'll have more soon. And uh, the, I like to use a heavy stick when I warm up and practice on a pad. Uh, it gives me a nice deep sound. It gets me nice and loose. Uh, these particular sticks are pretty heavy. They're made out of leopard wood or, or lace wood, they call, some people call it. It's from Australia. It's a beautiful wood. I don't know. I'll try to give you a close-up of that. Okay. 
So these sticks are about uh, 78 grams, which is a pretty heavy stick. Now, uh, to get 78 grams with a maple stick, uh, or even a hickory stick, which is even heavier than maple, uh, you'd need to go to a very, a very thick diameter for the stick. And I don't like that. I like a regular thickness, somewhere around 5 eighths. But most of the drum corps sticks, marching band sticks, are like 3 quarter, some even 7 eighths. That's too much for me, too, too much thickness. So the good thing about these exotic hardwoods is they're a lot harder than any of the domestic woods like oak or maple or hickory. Um, hickory being the hardest of those, okay? Uh, persimmon, if you can get it, is actually the hardest wood, North American hardwood. Um, that's a great wood for sticks, but it's still, it's not as heavy as these woods. So these woods will be generally heavier than anything uh, you can get in North America. Some are from Africa, like Wenge. Uh, some are from um, Brazil. Uh, you know, some are from Australia, like I said. So I would suggest um, trying to find some heavier sticks to practice. If you're interested in these, you can email me and we'll see what I got. Okay? So those are the sticks that I'm using. Another type of rubber pad that I like, put this down here, is this. Now, unfortunately, I've had this so long that it's, there's, I think there was a label on it at one time, but there's none anymore, N no label anymore. Uh, this is a really cool pad because it's got beads in there. I don't know if you can hear them. So it sounds like a snare drum when you play it. Well, it would sound like a bad snare drum, but it sounds it has a snare sound. It's actually really good for practicing your orchestral rolls, your buzz rolls. Okay, and it has um, sort of a cushion underneath and you can see where the beads are really ingenious little design so i don't know maybe you can hunt on reverb or ebay and see if you see one of these it's blue on top and black on the bottom i've had this probably 20 something years i bought it when i was doing a lot of clinics on the road drum clinics i was touring traveling i just throw this in my suitcase and um, that was it. You know, I'd practice warm up before shows with this. Okay. So I don't know what it's called, but I call it, you know, my blue pad. All right. Put that down. Good. And that's pretty much it for all the rubber pads that I'll, that I'll accept when I, when that I use. I don't like the real feel, feel pads and things like that. To me, it's like playing on a table. Uh, it's, there's nothing real about it unless you play a lot of drum corps, then that is like playing on a table because those heads are so hard, you know, that you play that you play on. But for regular drumming, I like something with a real head. So let's go through the types of pads with a regular head. So the first type and my favorite are these drum mutes. Okay. Now, a guy named Henry Adler invented these way back in the day, probably in the 1950s or 60s. I'm not sure, but I am lucky enough to have an original one. So let's find that. I got piles of pads here. All right, this is an original Henry Adler. This is what they look like. I found this in a pawn shop in New York in the uh, 1980s, and I've never seen another one like it. It looks like it's got some sort of asbestos on the back of it, so I'm trying not to breathe that in. Okay, and this one has deteriorated to the point of disrepair. I don't really use it anymore. Some of the lugs have fallen out. I've replaced them. But this is, I used, I used to leave this in the symphony uh, trap case at the hall and just warm up with it, you know. And uh, they've changed quite a bit. This had a plastic coated head on there, so you couldn't use it for brushes. I'll show you what this sounds like. It's going to be not pretty. not too bad but when you play it loud you hear that clicking that's because of these have all worn out these um this linkage i, I want to try to repair this i just um found it after a couple years i had it i put it somewhere and i just didn't even remember i had it so i'll fix that up but that is a smaller pad that is a uh i believe it's a 12 inch 
pad, and they used to make these to put on all your drums. Well, they still do. Sabian makes them now, but uh, and and then you could play your drum set with these all all around the drum set. I I've never used them that way, but you definitely could do that. Okay, and again, the beauty of these um, is that you can put them on a snare drum and get snare response. You see there, it's jumping around. So what I do is I put a little rubber, piece of rubber under there. You can cut that from, it's like a carpet underlayment and put it on there. You do lose some of your snare sound. Okay, obviously when you do that. So part of that wobbling is if you own one of these, these, these um, little things on the bottom here, they're little legs. They can get crooked and all, all kinds of things. So you can just take a wrench and straighten them out. And then this whole apparatus can get bent too. So they do take a little maintenance, okay? But that's an original, you know? So this thing is, is, is probably, you know, 60 years old or so. Okay, put that away. Good, now, the modern version of that pad is this. This is a Sabian quiet tone pad, okay? So they're making these now. Originally, uh, they kind of changed the parts and they were really not good. There was problems with the rim area being really loose. And actually, this is one of the ones that's not great. Okay. And they changed the heads and all that, um, the kind of head. So uh, let me grab this real quick because I'm going to want to show you some brushes in a minute. So when, uh, when I was a kid, I used to go into New York um, uh don't tell my mom, but um, I'd cut high school and go into New York and visit my buddy Barry at Drummer's World. That store is no longer there. And there was a guy that sold these to Barry. This is the drum mute uh, from the uh, 70s, late 70s, 80s, 90s. And after that, Sabian bought the patent. And these were made by a guy in New Jersey, kind of a heavy set guy. I never got his name. I did meet him once. Um, and he would bring them to Barry's shop, and uh, whenever I had the money, uh, I'd buy them. I think that back then they were probably like 40 or $50 a piece, uh, which is, you know, was a lot of money back then. Uh, but the parts they used were great. So you see here they got rid of that asbestos, and they used some sort of rubber coating. It's much more solid. These still come loose, by the way. Okay, you need to straighten them out from time to time. But it was a much more solid pad. And boy, did they sound good and feel good. So, And the thing I loved most about them, uh, besides that they felt good when you played with sticks, was you could play them with brushes. Okay, so they have a good feel for brushes. This head's a bit worn out. This one's pretty old. It's, um, I'd have to say, almost 30 years old. Okay, I'll show you some others. Um, they, they all do sound different, by the way. Okay, now if you buy one of these on eBay, an old one, be careful because they can fall into disrepair really easily. Make sure you can return it if possible. An old one. You can buy the new ones from. Um, you know, Steve Weiss or anywhere, Amazon probably, that Sabian makes those, okay? Now, I'll show you the difference between them in sound. They both have these rubber pads on the snare drum under them, okay? So this is with the snares off, obviously. So here's the uh, original. And here's the Sabian. So one thing I noticed about the Sabian is it's got this kind of high-pitched snap to it. And it sounds like it's almost hitting something. It is great. I mean, it's definitely the best thing you can still get. 
It's just not as good as the older ones. I feel like it doesn't feel as good. If I do some closed rolls, Okay, now the big thing about that with the closed rolls is if I play on the edge, it's almost impossible to get any kind of response. It's dead. But on the old ones, if I play on the edge, you still have response. And I believe that's because what's under that head, a piece of some sort of rubber, is a little bit harder in the old ones, okay? as opposed to, it's almost unplayable, unfortunately. But for anything loud, you know, Okay, uh, it's just a different sound, but still good. So that's the difference between the Sabians and the um, the older ones. Now, the next type of pad with a real head we'll talk about are the Remo practice pads. Okay, these go back a long time. This is one from my childhood. So, you know, when I started playing, I've been playing since I was seven or eight and... Oh my God, this thing is super old. It's almost, well, it's 50 years old, more or less, okay? So, these sound like this. So this particular one's got kind of a lower sound because it's so old and beaten down. But uh, I like the way they feel. They're great. They're still great. Uh, this is a little harder to play than the, the regular drum mute. This one bounces more. It's more user-friendly. This one, you got to work a little harder. And i got to say, it's not as pleasing to play. Now, I like this because it's got this, uh, this ring that fits perfectly on a 14-inch drum head. You could easily make one of these. This is what came with it. They, they uh, all had this, well, I'll show you one here. That's a modern one. They have this screw hole that you just can put on a stand, okay? Uh, which is great. But this will fit on a regular snare drum. It's not super portable. Uh, it's a little bit heavy. So if you put it in a suitcase, it'll take up some room. All right, but I like that because I can put it right on a 14 inch drum and it just, it's not gonna move. So if you can find one of these on eBay, again, used, uh, that's a, it's a good thing to have. Okay, now I'll show you some of these other modern Remos. Now, again, these don't use a drum key. They use a, a slotted screwdriver, okay, a flathead. So here's what the modern ones sound like. As in most things, they don't sound as good as the, the new ones, okay? Uh, you can get different sizes. This is the 6-inch version. You probably need to do something to keep it from jumping around if you put it on the drum. That's why I recommend a stand for it, okay? So you can get these in different sizes. And these are good to recommend for students that don't want to spend all the money for one of these drum mutes. These things are not that expensive. They're probably 20, 20 or 30 bucks at the most. And rec I recommend buying used ones. There's not much you can do to destroy these things. They're too small to play brushes on, just so you know. That's the only drawback. Uh, to them and the feel okay so put these away now let's uh, talk about uh, some of my uh, well one of my other really favorite types of pads I'm gonna move this drum over for a minute and we're gonna bring this in so this is the Ludwig tunable practice pad this thing is just brilliant as they say in the UK.
uses a real head and it's tunable with a drum key just like the quiet tone um, actually I got one laying here I can show you this is a really nice one I have several of these sometimes I I set them up and use them uh, believe it or not to practice timpani <laughs> if I don't want to uh, if I'm you know out and about and I don't have timpani available uh, because you know the beating spots so small if you can be accurate with this you're not gonna have a problem they don't feel anything like a timpani though I guarantee you that all right so that's um, that these are made by Ludwig that's a Ludwig Weathermaster head this one's super old now they all have this uh, thing where you can put a, a stand put them on a stand like this all right the, uh, the different error ones are uh, are made uh, quite differently uh, the, I think these used to be in, included in if you bought one of the school bell kits they used to uh, include a pad like this in there which is great because these are fantastic pads they do sound different uh, the different ones you get this one sounds like this and this one sounds like this so I can't guarantee you that if you buy one it's going to be great yeah I'll show you another one so here's another one so that's that's more similar this one I believe is even older than these two it is because it's got the old Ludwig thing on there and a wood instead of metal base uh, and you know I could tune this up but this is in great shape this one okay but I do use them all I bring them around with me I, I leave them places whatever sometimes I lend them to students okay so if you can find one on eBay or reverb or any other place I suggest picking one of those up they're really small so you could fit them in a, a suitcase again um, the only problem is you can't play brushes on them well you can but they're so small it's gonna be hard to practice all right so that's the Ludwig um, practice pad uh, tunable practice pad probably stopped making these I'm guessing in the 80s I'm guessing so okay good so that's that now I did find a few more pads rubber pads I just want to show you a few of those so this is a real feel this is what I was talking about okay a small one and this is just solid gum rubber so I really really do not like these okay so anybody want to buy it you can this is really old from when I was a, a tiny little kid okay it's just rubber it has nothing to do with playing a drum and it's it is quiet but there's better solutions and a better solution would be this okay this is a solid um, Promark rubber pad but it's on top of metal and just like the vacuum pad that I suggested before this is a good solution okay it's much more realistic okay you got to work to play it it's not like rubber where it's just basically fighting back you know it's always bouncing this does not that much rebound and the good thing about this one is it will go on the stand so again if you see one of these used they're pretty good they're okay it's a Promark practice pad probably get a cheap five bucks probably and the last one okay this is a Vader uh, another five dollar practice pad uh, this one does connect to a stand so it's it's pretty handy like that and so this is a different kind of rubber than that other pad uh, it's harder a little bit harder so it's if you're gonna get a rubber pad the harder the rubber the better or better yet if it has a piece of metal under it it's it's better okay so something solid not just a piece of gum rubber so that's the Vader pad the good thing about it is it's whisper quiet so really the quietest thing I own right here so if you see one of these that's probably worth having again throw it in your suitcase if you're in a hotel somebody's sleeping this probably would not wake them up it's so quiet okay so just to recap the um, my recommendation for pads are number one the drum mute okay if you can find an old one that's in good shape that's great 
Uh, if you can't, the Sabians are fine. Just don't expect them to be sensitive on the edges. Okay. Number two choice would be the Ludwig old practice pads, the tunable ones. They're fantastic. Can't play brushes on them, unfortunately, because they're too small. They only came in this one size. Okay. It's like an eight, eight inch size. All right. But like everything else, you can put them on a stand. My third choice would be the Remo pads. Okay. The, they don't feel great, but they use a real head. And so you have to actually work to play like on a real drum head. And if you could find one with one of these rings so it doesn't bounce around. Otherwise, put it on a stand. Okay. And my fourth choice would be some sort of rubber, unless you have to be absolutely quiet, then that's the only choice you have, which would be the vacuum pad like this. Okay. Or the, not that one, the Vader. That's okay. Or this Promark one. That's okay. Anything with some piece of metal or a harder rubber. Or if you can find one of these, this I really like. I showed you this earlier. Some really smart person came up with that idea to have the snare, the ball bearings in there, so it sounds like a snare. So I hope this helps all of you. Um, just keep sending me your questions and requests. I'm going down the list, and um, I'm about in the middle of it. <laughs> of a, It's a whole page of requests, probably about 50 of them on there. So uh, great. I hope you all uh, are doing well again. And um, this is during the pandemic. So I'm just trying to remind you, please stay inside so you don't kill old people like me. All right. And this will all be over soon and we'll get back to, to where we were and um, use this time to practice. Take care.